Hello, let's talk about gospel. This weekend we have the gospel of Mark chapter 1 verse 12 to 15. Uh, is Jesus in the desert? And the details are very beautiful. The gospel of Mark has a, a very special way of relating the stories about Jesus. Mark has only 16 chapters in comparison to the others, is the smallest. But also in every chapter when he's telling stories, he's very concise and we have to pay attention to the ideas that he develops. He will not expand on details, but expects that the reader who knows his Bible will be able to immediately correlate the ideas. Let's check it. Mark 1, verse 12 to 15. At once the Spirit drove him out into the desert. Why would the Spirit push Jesus to go out to the desert for 40 days? There is something that is embedded in Jewish memory. And it is when they came out of Egypt and they have to go through the desert before getting into the Promised Land. But that journey was full of temptations temptations to go back to Egypt and remember all the things they ate even though they were slaves. But still, the temptation was there. They also were tempted because they complained and grumbled against God all the time, even telling God, that's why you brought us out here to die in the desert. There were not enough tombs in Egypt and God wanted to make of them people of God, free people. That's where the 40 has a meaning. 40 is the necessary time for an accomplishment. In this case, spiritual might happen to the people. They were still in Egypt mentally. Their bodies were in the desert journeying towards the promised land, but they were not ready to get to the promised land yet because they had the mentality and the heart still back there. So the 40 will be all the process that God will do with them so that they can get detached from all that old mentality. The desert is needed. That retreat is needed. And it's better that you spend the necessary time in the desert and let go of all that grumbling, all those doubts that don't allow you to grow. And he remained in the desert for 40 days, tempted by Satan. He was among wild beasts, and the angels ministered to him. So Jesus is the perfect person to go to the desert and confront the temptations there, because he trusts in his Father. He knows why he's there. What is the reading before going to the desert? baptism of the Lord. And that's when he was baptized by John the Baptist and the heavens were open and the Spirit descended upon Jesus. And God the Father said, this is my beloved Son, in him I am well pleased. So the scene is beautiful, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. So I am well pleased in him. So he's the one that can complete what Israel was unable. And so is Jesus going to accuse Israel? No. Jesus will go to the desert to heal the wound, to complete the process and tell Israel, it's okay. Now you can continue without guilt. We will walk together in this. But Israel doesn't exist anymore in the way it existed in the time of Egypt and in coming out of Egypt. Well, yes, but it's the new people of God. It's the new creation in Jesus Christ. So Jesus is completing the process. Glory be to God. And he remained in the desert for 40 days, tempted by Satan. He was among wild beasts, and the angels ministered to him. The animals that dwell in the desert are not the usual animals that we would say wild beasts. But again, like Mark knows his Bible, so he is taking another step further in the Garden of Eden. 
where there were animals and remember that Adam was the one, the, the, the one in charge of naming the animals? Well, now Jesus is there with them again. So there's peace, the restoration of creation. And now the angel, the angel that with Adam and Eve was at the gate of the garden, guarding a cherubim, guarding with a sword, a fire sword, so that they would not come back. Now the angel is at peace and they are serving Jesus. So Jesus is now the Lord of the new creation. So that desert is not a desert anymore. The promise of Isaiah is being fulfilled. Now it is a garden. After John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. And in verse 15, it says that it's the time of fulfillment. Yes, because now Jesus is here. The new beginning, the reset of everything is, has happened. So the kingdom of God is at hand. Jesus is coming. So now it's up to us to open our hearts so to receive him. But the reading says, repent and believe in the gospel. And that's important because that's saying, you know, there's a new reality. There's a new garden. There's a new restoration of whatever was broken before. Now it's, it will not be. So you have a place. But you cannot dwell in that place kind of behaving or with the same pains as before. You need to make adjustment, adjustments in your life so that the new house will be up to your measure. And so that means, imagine, I, I think I've shared this with you guys, how the caterpillar, uh, he looks kind of ugly sometimes, but he will transform in a, into a cocoon and then a butterfly. And so that's wonderful. What a transformation. So that is metanoia. That is a conversion of heart that really the outcome, the end product doesn't resemble what was before. But one thing, now the butterfly cannot eat the food that the caterpillar had before because now it's a butterfly. Now she has to look for sugar some, somewhere else and pollen. Well, what I'm trying to say is in the new situation, you need to make adjustments in your life. Otherwise, you'll be returning to the same old thing. And this is the kingdom of God. And this is the time of fulfillment. We need this. Let's allow Jesus to walk with us through the desert, through our Lent, so that we make, we adjust things. And at the end of Lent, they will not be things we did, but they will be behaviors to keep. God bless you.